definitely did not enjoy it as much as the first one. Not that I enjoyed the first one that much. A no for me on that front. Hello, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my December wrap-up for 2023. I read a total of 20 books this month, so I will be splitting it up into three different parts. I know I'm very late filming this. I don't have any excuses. I just didn't do it. So it's here now. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is The Witness to the Dead by Catherine Addison, and I give this a three out of five stars. This follows Thara Selahar, and he is a witness for the dead. This means that he has the ability to communicate with the dead by touching their body. At times, he can see the moments right before a person's death, and he becomes involved in an unsolved murder involving a famous opera singer after she is pulled from the canal. During his investigation, he is called to be the witness for the dead for a few other people and it's kind of the story of him trying to solve this murder as well as his I guess adventures as a witness for the dead. This is actually the companion to the Goblin Emperor which I definitely enjoyed this one a little bit more but I still can't say that I'm the biggest fan of this series. My biggest complaint about the series as a whole has always been the made-up language in this. I just find it very jarring in my opinion and I never get used to it. I did really like Thara though. I think that he is just a very kind individual and I did really love reading about his investigations. I do think that Catherine Addison's writing is very slow in nature, which I can't say I'm the biggest fan of. I just get bored very easily, so I give it a 3 out of 5 stars. A lot of people do love this series though, so take my rating with a grain of salt. Next up we have Wonder by R.J. Palacio, and I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. This follows August Pullman, who was born with a facial disfigurement, which has caused him to miss a lot of things. When his parents decide that it may be time for him to start at a mainstream school, Augie is a bit hesitant but hopeful. As he starts fifth grade, he quickly learns to navigate his new classmates and their differences. This has been on my TBR for so long and I've been putting it off and I don't really know why but I would like to report that I loved it so much more than I thought I would. It is such a heartbreaking and heartwarming book all in one. I loved Augie so much. I just want to protect him at all costs. He was just such a sweet and gentle soul and he did not deserve any of the things that happened to him and it just made me so infuriated to read about him but I loved him so much. I really like how we got multiple point of views in this, not only from Augie and his older sister but a lot of his classmates as well. I think that every character was very well developed and I think that they all had very unique personalities. Also, a big fan of Augie's parents and his older sister Viv. They were just so supportive of him and each other. I also loved how short these chapters were. It made the story very quick and easy to read. I think it's a great read, not only for the middle grade audience that it was written for, but people of all ages. Definitely check it out if you haven't already, which I'm sure you have, but five out of five stars. I loved this. Next up, I read The Sky Weaver by Kristen Cicerelli, and I gave this book a four out of five stars. This is the third and a final book in the Iskari trilogy, and it follows Sapphire, who is the king's commandant, and Eris, who is a pirate thief known as the Death Dance. Sir. At this point, we all know that enemies to lovers is one of my favorite tropes. This also had dragons and pirates, which are two of my buzzwords, and throw in a sapphic romance, and you know I was so invested in this. It was very fast-paced. We got dual perspectives between both Eris and Sapphire, which I thought was so well done because it really let you see both of the characters slowly falling for each other. The twists and turns in this book were spectacular. I've been saying since the very first book that I wanted a book following Sapphire, so I'm so excited that we got one in the end. I just find her to be such an interesting character and I loved learning more about her. I also think Eris was a fascinating character. I just couldn't get enough of the two of them together. I also think Sorrow the Dragon was a great addition to the story. I just wanted to give him a hug and I loved his little cute personality. Like the two first books, we get an incorporation of a story about the gods, which I think the one in this was really well done and flowed into the plot nicely. I really wish we were getting more 
from this world, but I do think that it was a good conclusion. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. The next two books are part of the same series. They are Dare You to Lie and Don't Say a Word by Amber Lynn Notch. This is a series called The Hometown Antihero. I believe it is a trilogy. I clearly only read the first two books. I don't really have an interest in reading the last book unless it magically falls into my lap, but I gave this one a 2.5 and this one a 2. It basically follows 17 year old Kyleen whose father is an FBI agent and he is framed for the murder of a police officer. Kyleen decides to move back to her hometown in order to clear her father's name. While she is investigating the murder that her father may or may not have committed, she is also trying to figure out which football player at her school shared a topless photo of her during a party one night. I just found this to drag quite a bit and I think that the two different plot lines of her investigating the murder and trying to figure out who shared the topless photo of her were so unrelated it didn't really make sense to why we were getting both of those plots at the same time. I just think that the focus should have been one or the other. I think that Kyleen was an interesting character. She never took shit from anybody. She was very sassy and stubborn and never backed down. But with that, I think that she came off as quite aggressive nine out of 10 times she was talking to literally anybody. This definitely has the I'm not like other girls trope. So if you're a fan of that, you might enjoy these books. I did like the friendship between Garrett, Kai, and Tabby. I think that was my favorite aspect of the book. There's also an FBI agent named Dawson who begins showing interest in Kai, who is 17, and this FBI agent is at least 23. So it was just a no for me on that front. The ending was also a little bit of a disappointment. We are left off on a cliffhanger, which leads me to book number two, which like I said, I gave a two out of five stars. Definitely did not enjoy it as much as the first one. Not that I enjoyed the first one that much, but you definitely do need to read the first book before you pick this one up because it picks up right where it left off and you will be very confused if you don't. In this one, Kai is still trying to clear her father's name, but now she is also investigating an undercover prostitution ring at 17 years old. Essentially a young woman who is one of these young ladies in this prostitution ring calls Kai up and says that there is a prostitution ring and she is the next victim and needs to figure out who is behind it before that happens. So she pairs up with Agent Dawson yet again, 20 something year old Agent Dawson, and they hatch a plan that Dawson is going to play her ex-boyfriend at school. I just find it incredibly creepy and I mean I believe that she does turn 18 in this book but it started when she was 17 and I just, I cannot get behind the 20 something year old and the 17, now 18 year old. I just can't do it. There's also a love triangle in this between Kai and her other ex-boyfriend and this agent fake ex-boyfriend. And I just, I wasn't rooting for either one of them. I just, nope. The plot line of solving her father's case is completely thrown out the window in this one and there are still so many unanswered questions. I'm assuming that they need to be answered in the last book, but uh, like I said, I probably will not be picking it up. So I'm not a fan of this series, but th they might be for you. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap up is the final book in the Percy Jackson series. This is The Last Olympian and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I finished this just in time for the TV show. Have I watched it yet? No, but the point is is that I finally completed the series. I think that this was a really great conclusion to the series, even though I'm pretty sure there is another sixth book now, but I'm pretending that there's not so that I can say that I finished this. It was full of action and adventure. I don't think there was really any dull moment in this book. I liked how we learned more behind Luke's actions and the reasons why he chose to do what he did. I really loved Perseveth. I think that their banter was so cute and I just really liked them together. I do wish that the love triangle between Percy, Annabeth, and Rachel was completely left out. I just don't really see the need for it, but I'm glad it worked out in the end. Tyson and Grover will forever be two of my favorite characters. I can't get enough of them. I think they are so cute. Also big fan of Miss O'Leary the Hellhound. I think that the ending was satisfied. I liked where all the heroes ended up, and I'm definitely excited to start the Lost Heroes series because I have the first two books, so I can do that now. So that's exciting, but yeah, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. I think it was a great conclusion. All right, everybody. So those were the first six books that I read out of 20. Eventually, once I film and edit the part 
two and three of the wrap-up. Those will be up for your enjoyment, but let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!